John Barnett here, and it's such a blessing to come to you. Uh, Bonnie and I are all packed, and we're leaving tomorrow morning at 5 to 5. And I thought, oh, I, I got to run downstairs and record what I've found. Now, just to explain, I study the Bible constantly to teach, um, as many of you do. I know that there are pastors watching this and Sunday school teachers and women's ministry leaders and men's ministry leaders and, and all kinds of servants of the Lord, missionaries. I hear from you, uh, and I, I want to thank you for encouraging us. Many of you come up to us. We just got back from uh, being in New York, and I spoke for a Bible conference there, and so many of you came up. And the month before, we were in Florida, and dozens of you came up and uh, through the eight services and just said, hello and and everything uh, uh, one of the best moments was uh, a man uh, in his 80s who came up with his iPad and said our Bible study watches you every week and he popped open his iPad and there was he was facetiming with his Bible study they were all meeting right then and he wanted them to say hello to me and I thought wow so I'm saying hello to all of you uh, even those of you that stood in line and, and finally gave up and I didn't get to say hello. Thank you. Thank you for encouraging us in this ministry. Now, what is it I want to show you? Right here. Signs of the End, September Update. If you remember, back in August, I started keeping a file of all the headlines that I saw. And as I went through uh, preparation, I would read the news or a, an alert would come up on my computer and I'd say, whoa, that matches just what I'm talking about. So I'd screenshot it and put it into a file. And after a whole month of doing that, I showed you a lot of them in August. I did an August prophetic update of Signs of the End. Well, getting ready for this trip, and, and we're teaching uh, in the United Kingdom and France and Central Europe uh, and going on to East Asia. And we'll be gone for eight to 10 weeks as I prepared for all those courses, for hour after hour of classes, I got another entire full file this month of, of headlines. This is the headline that exactly parallel the news. Now, l let me show you what I mean by that. Going back here, this uh, is what I, I mean when I talk about signs of the end. Do you see this, this slide I have up for you? It's Revelation's picture of Earth at Christ's return. So, and I'm going to show you how, um, this is fascinating to me, how I'm teaching the book of Revelation, but I started looking at the correspondence between the book of Revelation and everything that's in Christ's three prophetic messages in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And, well, let's just go through the, the slide, okay? Uh, remember in Matthew 24, Jesus, in Matthew 24, Jesus said the most uh, prevalent, the most vivid part of the tribulation will be religious deception. That's the number one. He repeats it, repeats it, repeats it. You see in verse 4, 5, 11, and 24. It says the same thing in uh, Mark and Luke. Then in Matthew 24, Jesus said there's going to be war and violence and murder. Uh, he says there's going to be... Uh, in all three Gospels, in the, the synoptic Gospels, we call them. There's going to be food scarcity, pandemics, uh, which are called uh, pestilences, and they're, they're diseases and, and uh, sweeping the globe. And, of course, we've all gotten painfully used to that. Um, in Mark, he just calls it troubles, but pestilence, pestilence in Matthew and Luke. Uh, hatred of God and persecution, again, is the, the next one. And then he starts talking about earthquakes and seismic uh, events that, that are going to scare people. And that's in the Synoptic Gospels. And then uh, global fires and solar flares. And I thought this one was fascinating. Hurricanes and typhoons. Uh, do you see now what I mean about the news? I, it's almost like the the news networks are trying to illustrate what the Bible says is coming. So uh, let me show you how this chart works. 
these are the 12 signs of the end that I decided to focus on. Now, I teach the book of Revelation, and you can go to the Discover the Book Academy, dtbma.com, and you can see 20-hour-long full courses on Revelation. But to kind of slim it down for where you could catch this in an update, these 12 areas, uh, like ocean death, water scarcity, for you just know, a minute, think about what we're hearing almost every day, almost every hour, at every weather report. What do you hear? Oh, climate change is causing that, or global warming. Yes, our climate is changing, and yes, the, the mean temperature of the earth is going up. Since when? Well, they've been keeping, I noticed they said in the 172 years that they've been tracking uh, ocean um, events, you know, and hurricanes. Another one said 150 years they've been studying this. And then they talked about the father of meteorology and how he started uh, forecasts. Yes, in our recorded time, the last two centuries, in what scientists have kept, we're seeing a creeping up of global temperatures. Yes. Now, it was probably warmer during the time before the flood because the whole earth was kind of like a, a steam bath. And, and that's why the hyperbaric conditions and that's why uh, ferns could grow to be house size. That's why trees were... Uh, I mean, the redwoods were, were not giants back then. They're, they were all giants back then, okay? That's what the fossil record... I mean, Bonnie and I have driven through the petrified national park so many times and stood by that, I don't know, what is it, 100, 120-foot-long, gigantic petrified log, and they say that was just one and there's a whole forest of them. So Earth's climate has been different at different times. Uh, they find all kinds of Greenland and Antarctica... Uh, tropical growth. But let's talk about right now. What is the news doing? And why is this even important? Well, when you look at this chart, that is amazingly important. This is what's on the news all the time. And what the Bible says in Revelation is the whole world is going to be seeing this. And guess what? Jesus said that people all over the world, look at there at number nine, People are going to have panic attacks. They're actually going to, Greek word, apsuko, die because of the fear of the oceans raging and what's coming and looking up at the heavens shaken. Did you notice the whole world? Now, as we go through the slides in just a minute, you're going to notice that everybody in Europe knew about the bubonic plague in the 1400s. But I don't know that everybody in Africa knew about it, and certainly not in India or China or out in the Oceania area or South America or even the Native Americans in North America. Did they know about the Black Death? Probably not. Everybody knows everything that's going on because of the Internet. We're living in an unprecedented time that the book of Revelation describes as one of those Times we know we're at the end when the whole world witnesses events. Because in Revelation 11 and 13 and all the way through, we see global events. And there's never been global events until we had the advent of satellites and then global television and now the global internet. But let's, let's go through the slides. Uh, the purpose of Revelation is how to live for God in an ever-darkening world. The world is darkening, okay? And, and for me to explain, uh, you know, Jesus returns to heaven after the uh, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. He comes back 60 years later, right here, and visits John and Patmos and visits the churches during the second generation after they had already gotten the Gospels and the Epistles. We cover that uh, immensely. But let's look at the, the 12 signs, okay? And, and let me just update you on those because I just got a sweet note from someone and they said, if you would make all your messages 20 minutes or less, a, a lot more of us would watch them. Well, this one's already at 10 minutes, so let me go fast for all of you that are going to cut out at 20 minutes, okay? Religious deception talked about throughout the synoptic gospels. The Bible clearly teaches 
in 1 John 2, 18 and 4, 3, that we can expect an invasion from the pit in the last days. There have always been demonic influences, but during the final days, most people will be led astray by evil spirits and occultic teachings, okay? The Greek word for demon, daimon, is also in Greek literature, in mythology and everything, and daimons were looked at, and that word coming from the Greek culture means an intelligence, and they were these supernatural intelligences that, that guided people. Alexander depended on them, Nero depended on them. The, you've probably heard of the Oracle at Delphi and, and Apollo being the god and the dragon revealing all kinds of uh, what we would call demonic insight. Well, think about it. Demons are intelligent spirits. They are thousands of years old. They do know every language of every person on earth. They can enter any room. They can read any document. They can watch you. You're never alone. When you turn in the corner and, and are watching something on your cell phone and check that there's no camera, guess what? There are enough demons that they know everything that you're watching. You add that to Satan, the most powerful and intelligent being ever created, and think about what's coming. In Revelation 13, we talk about the real Terminator, Satan plus AI plus a robotic humanoid. It speaks and can kill. Uh, you can read all about it. I mean, the, they're talking about this singularity when we merge, and you hear about, you know, Musk and others are trying to merge computer trips, chips with the human brain. Well, Satan's going to do it. And Satan's killing robot of Revelation 13, 15 has the image of the beast. It's, it's empowered, it's artificial intelligence, and it's globally lethal. And we're not talking about, you know, the, the Terminator series of Arnold Schwarzenegger. We're talking about the Bible says that Satan is going to use every means possible. And look at what we have with our, our world wide web and this, this all connected device world we live in. Okay. Secondly, war, violence, murder. That's what Revelation 6 says. That's what the synoptic gospels agree with. Every day we're seeing these images. This is the, the war in Ukraine. Every day we're seeing these images. If you live here in America or uh, even the European papers carry them, U.S. surpasses 400 mass shootings in 2023 so far. Now, by the way, that was way back in uh, July. Uh, this is September 11th. September 11th, 911. I mean, we're talking about terrorism, murder, warfare. It's just, it's so prevalent that it's almost desensitizing us to what's really going on. How about this one? Food scarcity. Now, actually, the, the fad right now is a new drug that's expensive that helps people lose weight. But you know what the reality is for the underprivileged part of the world, uh, the hundreds of millions of people that don't have food security, they're struggling, they're suffering, it's real. Uh, pandemics, oh, by the way, on food security, all we need is just a blight, a drought. All we need is maybe uh, for all those genetically modified seeds to not be delivered one year and you can't replant from last year's crop. Food scarcity is always at the door. But how about this, pandemics? The Synoptic Gospels talk about it, but, but what's really going on? I like this. Uh, a British paper had this, first of all, the history, and then the death toll, okay? The history, from right now, going back, they talk about, uh, you know, the HIV, but look at this, the Spanish flu, look how big. Uh, that was 40 to 50 million. Uh, the third plague in... in uh, 1855, smallpox in 1520, the bubonic plague, going all the way back to the Antonine, the Justinian, in the Roman times. So, so this is, there's, there's a long track record of pandemics. Look at this, 200 million died between 1347 and 1351. In four years, 200 million, and the world population was a fraction of what it is now. That was a major event. That's why they have this biggest uh, smallpox in, in 1520, the Spanish flu during World War I, the plague of Justinian rocked the world with 50 million people dying in the 6th century. Okay? Now think about what the headlines are saying. There's a link between air pollution 
and antibiotic resistant pathogens. What do I mean by that? Well, we're breathing in, we're lowering our, our immune system strength, and it's almost like because of our world that we're living in with all the pollution, that we're getting close to a time where we're not gonna have these secret weapon super drugs. But look at this. Wired Magazine talks about AI building highly effective antibodies that humans can't even imagine. Guess what? If AI can help build these new antibodies, can you imagine the pathogens that the terrorists can build? That they can manufacture that will overwhelm any antibiotic using artificial intelligence? God says that a fourth of the world are gonna die of pandemics during the last days. Boy, we see that in the news. The hatred, fifthly, in Revelation, the, the fifth one that Revelation brings out that the synoptic gospels agree with uh, are the, the universal hatred of God and persecution of his people. We, we don't face that very much, but boy, it's common everywhere else. Uh, look, in, in Mexico and in northern South America, all over uh, northern Africa, all over the Middle East, and all over Asia and Oceania, there is all kinds. 360 million Christians are suffering persecution right now. And, and you can read this. This is just an article that came out. Look, they list them in order and, and how many people are facing and what and what are the worst of the countries. How about this, number six? Quakes and seismic events. The, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all talk about this. Did you notice this week, Morocco? I remember driving, I look at that map, I've been all over those, those cities. That's where we delivered Bibles. When, when I was part of the, the Bible smuggling ministry in the 70s, we brought Bibles into Morocco so they could mail them across the whole Dar el Islam, all the Islamic world, get them inside their, their postal system where they don't search and censor. And so uh, this is especially close to my heart. I've been in those buildings I'm seeing on the news that are flattened because we spent weeks traveling this country. Uh, look, look what the headlines say. Uh, the first one said over 800 killed. Look at this today, 2,600 people killed. And this is just the beginning. I mean, the Bible says that earthquakes are going to get more severe and closer together, and they're going to affect more people the closer we get to the end. Uh, I'm teaching through Paul's life and letters. As I was teaching through Acts chapter 11, guess what it says in Acts 11? That, that the, the early sending church for missions was Antioch. Here's Antioch. It's called Antikia in Turkey today. On February 20th, there were two quakes. 59,000 people died. Wow. That's, that's just a... And you say... What are those red lines? These are the fault lines. These are the huge uh, tectonic plates that are all prone to rumbling. I mean, every time there's a, a quake in Iran, we know about this. Every time that there's, there's, I mean, constant tremors and quakes in Turkey, Israel has them. The, the, if you look at a fault line map of the world, most of the Earth's population is sitting near some seismic activity. The Bible also goes on, number seven, of these 12 are global fires, smoke, gloom, and volcanoes. Uh, global fires. Uh, think about, and by the way, the Synoptic Gospels talk about this, and Revelation vividly talks about this. Uh, Maui, last month, I mean, even one of our staff members was trapped on the island. They were there on a like their second honeymoon, and, and they were trapped, and, and it was a horror. It was like a, living in a horror movie but it's not just Maui. The Canadian wildfires. I mean, we kind of, a new news item like Morocco quake comes to the forefront, but look, look at the trajectory of what's happened this year just in the Canadian wildfires compared to what's become. I mean, this is normal. This is the new normal, and this is now. That's amazing. Uh, here's another chart from the BBC. Look at this. Look. The Bible says 
closer together, greater intensity, and greater impact on people. Wow. Uh, here's a fascinating article that was a whole part of this time of fires, and, and especially uh, in Europe. It says, did you know there's a temperature at which the human body cannot survive? And they said, we're getting close to that in some of these 120, 130 degree uh, uh, heat waves that we're seeing. You know what else the Bible says? There are going to be solar flares. Uh, the Bible puts it, the sun scorches people. Uh, there are going to be near earth objects. The Bible says that that stars fall from heaven, flaming objects, something like a mountain falls from heaven. We would call those uh, near earth objects. All, all the way through the synoptics and then all the way through uh, the, the book of Revelation. Here's just one article that I caught this. this I mean, I could fill the, your screen with them. But how do you like this one? So this is August 9th, so just over a month ago. Solar flare knocks out radio across the U.S. and it won't be the last. NASA captured this solar flare bursting out. And scorching, I like the word scorch, that's the word the Bible used, scorching flares coming toward earth. Now this one, a lot of times we've missed. Luke 21, Jesus says, and let me read it for you, okay, Luke 21, 25. And by the way, these references you should look up and mark in your Bible. You know, this is a great way to witness. You know, pack a track in your Bible or your wallet and... And on your lunch hour, when you're going out, say, I'm, I'm in a Bible study, and I think it's fascinating. They go, oh, what are you studying? Bible prophecy. I was just having my hair cut, and uh, I always try and find a way to share the gospel. And so, you know, while the vrrr is going around my ear, uh, the, the barber says, uh, what do you do for a living? I said, I, I teach. And they go, oh, what do you teach? What, what topic? I said, oh, I teach ancient literature. And they said, well, like what? I said, well, I teach uh, biblical prophecy from ancient literature, the Bible. What? The Bible? Prophecy? What, what kind of prophecy? Listen to this prophecy. And by the way, I, I got to share the gospel with that barber, and I hope that's one of the goals that you have, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. How he forgave you of all your sins, how he gave you peace and joy and hope, how you have security in him. Verse 25, it says, And there will be signs in the sun, solar flares, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity. Why? The sea and the waves roaring, and men's hearts failing them from fear and expectation for those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Jesus talks about time when hurricanes and typhoons are going to be so common, they're going to scare everybody on earth. How do you like this NASA photo? Let's see, that's uh, June 1st, it says there, a force in nature, hurricanes are changing our climate. But what, what this article from NASA was about is look at all of these hurricanes that were forming and you can see them spinning and typhoons. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at once in June. Have you been reading about this? They're talking about it's, it's the fastest forming, uh, the warmest water, the furthest south, uh, the earliest open and of the hurricane season. And, and we don't really pay attention to the typhoon season that goes on over in the Pacific. Oh, we did this year. Los Angeles had tropical storm warnings for the first time in, what was it, 60, 80, 100 years or ever? Wow. That's what's going on. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, that the typhoons and hurricanes and the accompanying storms and the waves and all the, the, the bad weather that you see right there all over the earth are going to become so bad that people are going to have heart failure, heart attacks, die. As they're watching, see what's going to happen is people are going to be watching the news and, and like we used to in Tulsa, and they say, take cover, the tornado is, is at this block. And they used to tell us exactly at 81st and Garnett 
get in cover if you're near there. Everyone's connected globally. Everyone is, is going to be watching these events and their hearts failing them for fear of what's happening on the earth. Number 10, uh, the Bible, uh, and by the way, now, you notice these are all in, Jesus talked about them, and now from 10 on, uh, Jesus only talks about them in Revelation. It's, it's an enlargement, kind of a, a deeper explanation of what's happening. Jesus said there's going to be an ocean death where all the creatures in the ocean are going to be affected. That's Revelation 8 and uh, chapter 16. Uh, are you reading the news? Our oceans are affected. Ocean warmth in June, as they were analyzing it, it set a record for May. I, I didn't have time to put in all the articles that talk about Florida, and it shows that, that well, here's one article. Let's see, when is this from? July 25th. Uh, the coral is dying. In, people are going out in boats, taking samples, trying to save the coral so, from extinction and bring it in where it's not too hot so it dies off. The Bible says that at the, at the end of the world, the last seven years of human existence as we know it before Jesus launches the millennium in his rule and fixes the earth because of the ecological disaster that the, the tribulation will be. Jesus said that a third of all the ships are going to die and all the creatures in the ocean are going to die. Just think of the smell. Have you ever seen red tide? Uh, water scarcity is another one Revelation brings up. And by the way, I'm not bringing these up in, in, in the intensity or in the, uh, you know, most uh, prevalent in the news. This is the order the Bible brings them up. Uh, this list, see, it's following Revelation 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, C. And then we get to 6 and 8 and 6 and 8 and 16. Uh, again, just in Luke and then in 8. And eight of Revelation. So I'm following the order that God says uh, that he announces them in Revelation. But water scarcity, look at this, five of the six most water stressed countries in the world are in the Middle East and North Africa. I mean, what, what we see there is, is horrifying. South Asia is the most densely populated region uh, experiencing water stress. And as the population keeps growing, water demand is going to increase. Look at what's going on in India and in northern China and uh, in the breakaway republics from the Soviet Union. But it's, it's not just there. In, in Europe, there's water shortage. They're turning off the fountains in the piazzas. They're not able to, to be able to keep enough water going that the people need, and especially the further south, the Mediterranean countries. That's the United States. And I mean, depending on where you live, look at what Texas, August 15, dry springs in central Texas warn of water shortage ahead. Well, I'm glad the news is illustrating this because God says there's going to be water scarcity and people are going to die from the scorching heat and the lack of water to drink. Here's the last one. And, and number 12, all of Revelation 9 is about the real alien invasion. Now, I had to put this up. It's like uh, if you watch any of the, I mean, uh, Prime or Netflix or anything, I mean, there is an alien invasion coming. Now, here's one that's on Apple TV that I haven't watched. Here's the old, you know, Independence Day. Here's, uh, you know, uh, Arrival. But we're not going to have Chris Pratt coming to save us from the aliens like all these movies talk about. The real alien invasion is horrible. And, and I do a whole hour on this, and you can go to the academy classes and watch this. But let me tell you briefly, because now we're on a uh, half hour, and I know all of you 20-minuters have left. But the rest of you that are still watching, take a screenshot of this. We're going to follow this. I'm going to update you each month on the latest news from around the world that matches this grid the Bible gives. What is your source of truth? Is it this? Some of you asked about this. This is duct tape. My Bible is uh, falling apart. I'm copying it into a new one. But what is your source of truth? Is it the internet with AI spewed out answers? 
Or is it the spirit of truth who dwells in your heart and mind who illumines the scriptures? Okay. Your source of truth, my source of truth, should be the word of God energized by the spirit of God. True Christians are lovers of truth. Take a moment to look up 2 Thessalonians 2. It's a complete description, description of what's ahead on this earth. What do we do because of the darkness and the demonism coming? How do we prepare? Hoard food? Get some gold coins? Well, spiritually, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a survivalist person that, that recommends all that stuff. I just say that you should be prepared for any eventuality. You should have your storm kit. You should have your snowstorm kit, your earthquake kit, your hurricane kit. If your house burns down, your plan for how to meet, if the, if the phones go down, the internet stops, etc., etc. So all that's wisdom. But what do we do spiritually to get ready for what's coming? Well, number one, I... I can't say this enough. You need to start some healthy relationships. Get connected. Find some other believers who you can share your findings and application and prayer on a weekly basis. In other words, get in a small group Bible study where someone every week looks you in the eye and they say to you, what is God doing in your life? Okay. So number one, get into some healthy relationships. Number two, learn some healthy verses. Uh, here's the slide on that. Uh, learning verses that support key doctrines, get some navigator verses, try learning one a week for a year. You learn a verse a week for a year, your whole life will be transformed. You'll find a stability in your life. You'll find a victory that the sword of the spirit brings. You'll find peace. Thy words were found and I eat them and thy words were for me the joy and rejoicing in my heart because I'm called by your name. It's the best way to have hope and peace and joy to get the word of God that we read, then we study, and then we memorize and we meditate on it. Okay, next slide. This is, a, this is the system I use, the topical memory system. You can get that on Amazon. It's the Navigator Key Verses. Uh, use a healthy study Bible. I strongly encourage uh, the MacArthur Study Bible. Uh, in fact, some of you say to me, I can answer a hundred questions with one video. They say, what do you use? I use the New King James MacArthur Study Bible. They say, what version do you recommend? I say, I recommend the version that most helps you, but you should have one that's a literal verbal translation of the Greek and Hebrew words, not a dynamic equivalence. People ask me, what version of the Bible do you use? I use the New King James. I use the English Standard Version. I use the New American Standard Version. Those three I, I primarily use in my study. Uh, I memorized as a child and know hundreds, hundreds and hundreds, probably thousands of verses in the King James. So I'm not opposed to the King James, but I do believe in modern scholarship. But I don't believe in dynamic equivalence where they say, well, this Greek word kind of implies this. No, no. There should be a word-for-word -word correspondence. And that's what the New American Standard does, the New King James does, the English Standard Version. Those tie to words. You get into the, you know, the message and the New International and a lot of these other versions. They're not any longer anchored to the Greek and Hebrew texts, okay? Uh, so, healthy study Bible. By the way, I can't say enough about having a study Bible. Uh, see this slide? Uh, you, you, you need a Bible that teaches historic evangelical dispensational truth. Use the study Bible to trace key doctrines and what the scriptures teach. Um, I always say if the internet shut down and if, if someone, you know, if your house burned, where do you have everything that you believe in one place? That's why I have MacArthur Study Bible. It has every major historic evangelical doctrine that has ever been believed and taught within the Church of Jesus Christ for 20 centuries, has every doctrine explained and, and described all the verses where you can defend what you believe from. Plus, at the bottom of, uh, in, in a study Bible, the top part is the Bible. The bottom part are study notes. And every uh, discrepancy in the Bible, every hard passage in the Bible, 
The 25,000 notes in the MacArthur Study Bible explains every one of them. So, and by the way, I don't get commission for selling them. I just, I was at Grace Community Church with John MacArthur when they started it. In fact, I even contributed my parts to the MacArthur Study Bible when, when John's office would call and ask the different pastors to contribute. And I was on faculty at the Master's Seminary. So I subscribe to, to that. Now, yes, do, do I agree with every point and every note of that Bible? No. Do you agree with everything I say? No. We're all Bereans, Acts 17, 11. We search the scripture. They search the scripture for what Paul taught. How much more for what I teach or what, you know, John MacArthur teaches or John Piper teaches or Billy Graham taught or whoever. Do you understand? We're all supposed to be Acts 17, 11 Bereans and make sure what we believe is anchored to the scripture. But you want to know how to anchor most Bible doctrines that you believe? Get a study Bible, okay? Next slide, or the next uh, point is number four. Start studying. We have started the DTBM uh, Academy. Here it is. It's at DTBMA.com. It's the academy that has... Uh, and they keep going down here. All the courses, my favorite courses, Revelation, the 52 greatest chapters, Isaiah. But the academy is so that you can systematically study and find all of the, the syllabus and all of the course guide and all of the slides and all of the lessons in order. The videos are in order with an accompanying study guide for each one. And the actual slides that, like right now, that I'm, you know, going through are right there at the Academy. And number five, uh, pray for us. So that's it. And I'm sorry for all of you that left at 20 minutes, but pray for me. We're leaving in the morning. And this, the next one of these that I do for you is going to come from some uh, dormitory or some rented home or some hotel room somewhere in between Europe and Asia. Uh, but I'm going to faithfully keep teaching the Bible, and I'm going to faithfully keep watching the news. By the way, if you want to know when, when these are coming out, if on this video on YouTube, if you're still with me and you're on YouTube, if you hit the subscribe button, Google will tell you every time I post an update, a prophetic update or a new class. So just subscribe, and then you won't miss. Now, you don't have to watch all of them but you won't miss any. Okay, that's why I tell people, they come up and they say, how, how do I keep in touch with the latest? Every day, our staff posts something from what I'm teaching as I travel around the world, every day. If they don't, it means the power was out in Michigan or the power was out in Oklahoma or the power was out where we were in you know some remote area of Europe or Asia. Otherwise, if you want to know what's going on, and I post devotionals, you can sign up for those on, on Facebook uh, at Discover the Book Ministry. So I would encourage you, those five points, get health, healthy relationships, get in a small group, learn some healthy verses, study some healthy doctrine through a, a Bible study, uh, I mean a study Bible like the MacArthur Study Bible, and get involved in a systematic study. I just had a wonderful note from uh, a couple. They said they're in the Bermuda Triangle of internet coverage. There's a part of the United States that doesn't have any cable and they don't have cell towers and they feel like it's uh, a dead zone. And they asked, they said, can we have permission to go into town and download some of your videos and show them for our small group? I said, you sure can. But you know what? If you have reliable internet, why don't you just start devoting one, one Prime series or Netflix series a week and cut that out and study an hour a day through Isaiah, through Proverbs, through the 52 greatest chapters of the Bible, through Revelation, and the Lord will transform your life. Thanks for joining us for this prophetic study. John Barnett here. Thanks for praying for us. I hope that... Uh, as, as we travel, that those of you that are upholding us in prayer, that you will sense that you're part of the front lines of ministry around the world 
as you pray and support us and all the other evangelical missionaries that are going forth for the Lord. Till next week, God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. Thank you.